young girl, if only for a fleeting moment, hasn't dreamed of this. The mystique, the money, the magic of a model's life in New York City. Being the it girl, treated like a princess, a living doll. Like Giselle, Heidi, Kate, top models who make millions of dollars a year prowling catwalks and posing in the pages of Vogue. And the journey to high fashion fame starts here, about as far as you can get from New York City in suburban St. Louis with this pair. Look at this guy. Look at this guy. Look at the West End. You see the other tall blonde that just walked in the door? I don't think she was tall enough. Mary and Jeff Clark are model scouts. Let's hope that we get someone today. We're looking for the 1%, the needle in the haystack, the one in a million. She's a bit young, but I mean, look at her mom. Her mother is like 5'10", 5'11", maybe. Excuse me. Excuse me. Excuse us. We just got models and she's so beautiful. That's okay. Thank you, though. Are you sure? Positive. Okay, okay, thank you. <laughs> hmm. I feel bad for the girl because maybe in her heart she had a dream to be a model, but you know her mother just shut it down completely. It didn't work this time, but they have successfully spotted girls in some very unlikely places. Where are the craziest places you've found girls? Pumpkin patches. Pumpkin patch, a Ferris wheel. Oh, Dairy Queen, we found a girl in Dairy, Dairy Queen. Queen. We follow people in cars. In cars. How tall are you? She's like, who are these people? <laughs> we, we always say that if we actually talk about what we do, it sounds a little bit sketchy. We're professional stalkers. <laughs> professional stalkers, absolutely. Mary's scouting career exploded when she found this young man in a bar in Iowa in 1997. His name, Ashton Kutcher. It was a Tuesday and we went to a place called the airliner in Iowa City. I remember what he had on. He had on a flannel shirt, he had an apuka shell necklace, and he had a not so good frat boy kind of haircut. I made a beeline towards him. His success was instant. It was like a lightning rod. It was like, it changed both of our lives. Pick and choose, pick and choose. When Jeff and Mary are on the hunt, the kind of beauty they're seeking is not obvious. Is there something specific you're looking for? A facial structure, an eye color? The first thing we notice is their height, obviously. Yeah. You can be yeah. like traditionally pretty or kind of the girl next door. But what we're looking for is somebody that stands out beauty with a twist. This summer, Mary and Jeff are grooming three new teen discoveries. Malia was 15 when they spotted her at a cheesecake factory. <laughs> Haley was 13 when she scouted Mary and Jeff looking them up on the internet. And Gwen was 13 when they saw her at an American Eagle store in Iowa. Hi, I'm Gwen Carrier and I'm 5'9 and I'm in 4-H and I show my cattle. The girls are spending a few weeks living with Mary and Jeff at their home in suburban Missouri. It's going to be a sort of model boot camp. Malia's mother drops her off. Her dream is New York, so we'll do whatever it takes for her to reach her goal. It's clear her whole family is invested in her success. And just think how proud your mom will be when you're walking on a runway or you're in the magazine the first time. Then you can say, oh, mom, thank you for not buying those cupcakes. <laughs> Exploring their new digs is fun. So that's your bed because she took that bed. <laughs> but this is not a slumber party. This is tough business. At the end of this boot camp, only one of these girls will be picked to go to New York City to start her modeling career. Mary and Jeff bring the three girls to a big training session they're holding with other wannabe models they're developing. It needs to look effortless, but you need to be aware of your whole entire body. Okay, babe. Good. Back. They learn how to walk on the runway. <laughs> Haley seems to be a natural. Nice. Meanwhile, a photographer works first with Malia and then with Gwen. Good. Posing and walking is important, but these girls will not get anywhere in the modeling game if they cannot get down 
to a very specific size. The deciding moment of this boot camp will be when they are measured. I don't think people realize, I mean, it really comes down to an inch or an inch and a half. There's so many beautiful girls and there's such a competitive world that in every way, it's like you're looking at the scales and you're tipping them and you're tipping them and you're tipping them. Based largely on those measurements, Mary and Jeff will decide who makes the cut and is sent to New York City and who will be sent home. This is tough stuff. I mean, you're wrapping measuring tape around waists. <laughs> you are so darn cute. It is the most delicate situation that we deal with. It, it's a body business. The reality is they can't let themselves go. Which is why these girls are on a bare bones diet. For 15 year old Malia, broccoli is a staple. It's my go to food to fill me up. <laughs> and for 16 year old Haley, it's egg white. This usually keeps me pretty full. Mm -hmm. I have this with like a glass of orange juice in the morning. And then if I need something, I like like baby carrots, half an apple. Feed me. <laughs> I want some bread. They train like professional athletes. Normally I go for two hours or until I hit 13 miles. I went through like this thing where I'm like, why am I like torturing myself? And then I like, I like got my head back on straight and like extra determined. Do you ever worry that you're pushing girls too far to an unhealthy weight? I don't ever feel like we're pushing them to an unhealthy place because we so adamantly make them understand you have to be healthy in this pursuit. Well, Malia, Haley, and Gwen have a lot on the line here. So do Mary and Jeff. They invest an enormous amount of time, energy, and money in these girls. When it works, you're making 10% off yes. of somebody for a long time. Yes. That's a, that's a pretty good number. It could be. Yeah. When it works. When, when it, works. it works. When it works. The stakes are high for everybody. I'm putting off college. This is what I want. I want it bad. I want it more than anything. I'm ready to fight and do whatever I have to to get there. As decision time nears, though, the girls are worried that they haven't lost enough and the stress is mounting. It's getting harder and harder to lose weight in inches. Finally, judgment day arrives. Gwen is told she's not ready yet and she gets in her car to drive back to Iowa. I have to tone my legs more and get my hips down. So I just gotta keep working. I put off college to do this. It's my future now. Now it's the test of the tape for Malia. Let me see your waist pull your little shirt up just so. 24 and a half, which I'm sure is down. It's okay. It's just so. She's made great progress. You have made great progress. You can't That's be. For sure. You can see Mary and Jeff try to figure out how to delicately deliver the news to her. It, it takes time. Like, you, you can't be extreme. Malia has been cut. Do you feel a need to rush? Do you feel a need to rush? Not really. Perhaps making matters worse, the photographer tells Malia to look to Haley for advice. You see Haley, who's had some more experience, kind of take you through just more of the movement oh. side of it. It'll give you a lot of ideas. So get changed and then pull it over. She's trying to stay strong, but she is clearly upset. Um, I'm just doing whatever I'm married to say. Is this like a hard process? I don't, I don't know how to describe it. You can see her look resentfully at Haley, whose measurements meet the mark. Haley will now be heading to New York City. I'm really excited to go to New York. Molly makes me happy. I, I absolutely love it. This was like my time, and it's what I really want to do, and I just want to chase my dreams. 